and welcome to Amigos Retro Gaming. This is the third video in a series where I'm tricking out the Amiga 2500. So today I'm going to be installing the uh, A2286 bridge board. So what a bridge board allows you to do is to run PC based software on an Amiga. So this particular board that I'm installing uh, actually runs an Intel 286 CPU. There are two slots that this card can be installed into on the Amiga 2500 um, and the 2000 as well. Uh, so it's a 16-bit card, so it needs to go into either one of these two 16-bit slots here. Now I can't use the left-hand one, I have to use the right-hand slot there because you'll notice the daughter board that's um, attached to the left-hand side of the card actually protrudes quite away so by installing it into the right hand slot there uh, the daughter board's actually over and above the left hand slot so it kind of um, makes that slot useless really uh, I could install it in the left slot if I took out the Picasso I think that is there uh, to the left if I took the Picasso out I could install the 16-bit card on the left slot and another 16-bit card in the right-hand slot there. And you'll notice down the bottom right, those two spare slots, uh, they are 8-bit slots, so you could plug in 8-bit cards there. Time to install the software. So I'll just boot from the floppy disk here. Uh, you can see it's Workbench 1.3. And um, the time is complete completely out because the battery or oh, I think the battery's okay in this machine I just haven't set the clock anyway I know the real-time clock on the uh, bridge boards definitely flat it's a Dallas a real-time clock with built-in battery uh, there are ways you can fix them but I haven't uh, done that yet so um, first thing is to check that the actual bridge boards running you can do this um, fairly easily just by running the software directly from the floppy disk and in fact the the PC actually boots in um, hardware actually you know as you boot the Amiga uh, my understanding is that the PC is actually booting as well so it sort of almost runs independently of the Amiga uh, so here we have like a BIOS screen so I'm just uh, telling the bridge board what floppy disk drive I've got connected there okay and it's just detecting memory etc battery failure that's uh, what I was talking about before with the Dallas real-time clock definitely seen better days and we get the screen here so basically um, I know just from testing this that that's that card is actually running um, the bridge board's actually running, so now's a good time to do the installation. Uh, I did have problems with the um, bridge board to start with. I actually thought it was faulty, or intermittent at least, and um, it turned out uh, that it, there seems to be some sort of compatibility issue with the uh, hard drive card that I was using in the machine at the time. So. Uh, I've swapped out the hard drive card for a different one, that's the one that you saw in the first video of this series and um, it's running consistently every time now so um, there's certainly not a fault with the bridge board which is good so I'm just installing the files there, you can see the ticked files are the files that are going to be installed uh, the previous screen actually um, had a whole bunch of files that were deselected and that um, if you select those files what that does is if you're creating a bootable workbench disk with limited space as, uh, as we know that um, floppy disks only have 880k capacity and um, so some files have to be deleted off the workbench disk to make room for the uh, PC install. 
on a floppy, but I don't have to worry about that because I'm installing it to a hard drive. So just doing some testing here. Yeah, the PC's still running. Okay. Time to reboot. And boot from the hard drive this time instead of the install floppy. So we should be into Workbench 2. Yep, it's looking good. And um, just asking for the extras just there for a key, key mapping. Okay, and we should have in the Workbench folder a PC folder. Just tidy that up a little bit. And there we go. So the mono should be working. So that's good. Um, the problem I had was when I ran that software, when it wasn't working, when I had the compatibility issue with the hard drive card, um, it would come up with an error. Now I haven't been able to get the color working. Um, color PC side of it so I need to do a little bit more work on that but this video is really just about the uh, basic installation right I'll um, put this disk here in MS DOS 6.22 boot disk uh, now what you might have noticed earlier was a cable running from the card a flat uh, floppy disk drive cable now that leads to a PC compatible floppy disk drive. In this case it's a three and a half inch 1.44 megabyte floppy and that's where I've put this disk into that um, floppy disk and there you can see we can run a DIR on the disk. Um, just doing a little bit of testing here with with edit to make sure that the floppy disk drives are writing as well as reading. So the, the floppy disk will get mounted alongside, um, sorry, the, the floppy disk drive will get mounted alongside the uh, Amiga floppy disk. And um, so it'll be a two disk system, two floppy system. Okay, that looks uh, like it's saving okay there. It's making all the right sounds anyway. And just close that and... Um, Let's see if we can get back in and read that test dot text. Okay, that's looking good there. So reading and writing to the floppy disk drive. And um, yeah, so that that's pretty much it. It's fairly straightforward. Um, just a matter of slotting the card in, obviously, and uh, installing some software so um, not a lot to it and I will go into more detail in a future um, episode there so uh, yeah thanks very much for watching